Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? So I am checking out a really cool bike called the Runabout. It's right behind me there. It is a really cool, kind of like small, compact, like light duty cargo bike. Uh, it's from a company called Civi Bikes. Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the Runabout, which is kind of like a normal size or normal length uh, electric bike for cargo. A lot of cargo electric bikes are really long, you know, it'll come out normal just like a regular bike and then the back end will kind of extend out further, you know, almost as much as 80 inches in, in length from axle to axle. Uh, but this bike is actually pretty short, so the total length of the bike, including the tires, is actually 67 inches. So it's not a big monstrous cargo bike, it's more of like, you know, like a like a station wagon or something like that, or maybe just a kind of like a Subaru Baja, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Uh, so it's it's pretty neat. As you can see, I got a little bit of cargo uh, up on the front of the bike, and that's kind of what it's made for as kind of a brief overview. It does have a pretty cool step through frame, so it's easy to get in and out of. Nice kind of relaxed seating position with the handlebars and the seat in that orientation. And as you can see, I have a strap. So this is actually an aftermarket strap. It doesn't come with the bike, but this strap is kind of to give you an idea of what you can carry on something like this which is a fair amount so let's go ahead and talk about some of the components uh, while we're at it and then we'll get into the cargo uh, right before the electric system so up at the front of the bike uh, one of the first things you'll notice is the tire so these are of course are a 20 inch tire for the diameter but they're pretty fat these are a three inch wide tire so that's a pretty nice tread you have on here the tread really helps a lot for stability that's kind of one of the main draws is that on a bike like this that's carrying cargo you want to have a good surface area to kind of get your grip on the road and also helps balance quite a bit for left to right balance i like it a lot it has a pretty thick um tread to it like the actual tread pattern of it uh, has a lot of grip to it and i like that a lot it's pretty good very purpose built not a whole lot of other things about the tire that are especially nice i mean it does not have a reflective sidewall on the tire. That's one thing that would be kind of nice for city purposes. Uh, the bike does have some pretty good 13 gauge spokes up in the front, a little bit stronger than your average 12 gauge, uh, which is nice. Uh, rigid fork up here, uh, which is fine. You know, on a bike like this, a fair amount of the weight is on the back, of course, because the cargo is in the back, but also the riding position uh, is also in the back as well for the rider. So you have the weight kind of pushed backwards. Um, so uh, not a whole lot of shock absorption up here on the solid fork up here, which is, by the way, uh, an aluminum fork. The entire frame is an aluminum frame in the step-through pattern. Kind of get to that in a little bit. Uh, so also on the front, you do have some pretty wide fenders. I like these fenders because they're nice and wide <laughs> for the wide tire. It's a three inch wide tire and likewise a three inch wide for the fender. It is a plastic fender, you know, so it's nice and lightweight in that regard. Uh, they're a little, you know, they can kind of get uh, skimmed around a little bit. If you have especially big feet, uh, your pedals might come up and your foot planted here. You can kind of strike your toe on that a little bit, but it's fine. You know, it's pretty easy to adjust. It mounts both on the brace on the fork as well as on the crown of the fork uh, up in this position here that also is mounting for uh, the reflector up front. Uh, also in the front, you do have this uh, rack. It's a pretty cool rack, a nice little front rack that can rack that can handle a small bag and also, you know, a Slurpee or something like that that you can put up here uh, that fits into this little cup holder, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I like this rack a lot. It's very convenient for tossing a backpack or a purse or something really easy that's just right at the get-go. Also on the front of the bike uh, up here is the adjustable stem. So this stem has a 60 degree adjustment on it along with a 100 millimeter length. So it kind of sticks out a little bit and using a five millimeter Allen key, you can kind of loosen that up and then you can adjust the angle of the stem itself, which of course is holding the handlebar. So that'll kind of give you a little bit of reach if you want to extend it out a little bit, or if you want to pull it back in, you want to take a more relaxed position. You know, it doesn't have the quick adjustment. You know, you do have to use a tool to uh, get that open and closed. Yeah, but you know, it's there, which is really nice. Uh, the handlebars do have kind of a relaxed um, drawback to them, kind of in the sense that they draw back to you, <laughs> not like a, a con or a negative. Uh, they sweep back is the word I'm looking for. Uh, so they start pretty wide and then kind of taper in, and they not only have a rise to them, about a three inch rise, but also about a 45 degree back sweep. Kind of meets your hands so that your hands don't have to stretch out so much. Kind of makes it a little bit easier uh, to meet the handlebars instead of having to throw your weight forward into it. 
And that kind of does lean into the lean back riding position again, that you're kind of relaxed when you're sitting on this bike. Uh, so also up front, let's go ahead and talk about the controls a little bit. Uh, so on the grips, you do have like a faux leather uh, with nice stitching on here, which is pretty good. Uh, the throttle is also up here on the right hand side. This is a twist throttle that expressly will move the motor. Uh, so long as you're in any level of pedal assist, we'll kind of go over that in a little bit with the electric system. Uh, I do like the brakes. These are a four finger uh, brake handle up here with kind of a rubberized texture on the end. And that's pretty nice because you can reach it at any given time. And why don't I jump back down to the bottom of the bike again. So that brake handle, of course, comes into the mechanical disc brake. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump over to the other side and show you that in more detail. Uh, so this is a 160 millimeter rotor uh, right here uh, on the bike. That's being gripped by the caliper over here and it's a mechanical disc brake. Uh, these are some Tektro uh, mechanical disc brakes, uh, which are pretty fun. You know, you grip on them and they kind of pull on that little lever and then that will squeeze the disc. Honestly, I like mechanical disc brakes because I can fix them. <laughs> the hydraulic ones, they take a little bit more TLC. They're nice when they're operating, uh, but these ones I can fix on the fly with a couple of tools. And I like that. You know, I like having something that's a little more easy to, to work on uh, myself. Um, right here you do have a 15 millimeter nut for keeping the front wheel on. It doesn't have a quick release, uh, but the nut is all right. It's nice and stable. Uh, so continuing on with the control system. Uh, so on the top you do have the Shimano 7 speed shifter. Uh, this is for the turny derailleur in the back right now. We're in a fairly high gear. Uh, this button of course, or the lever, will make it a little bit easier to pedal. The button will make it a little bit harder to pedal. And like a regular bike, you do want to be pedaling at the time that you switch gears. Uh, they tuck a nice little bell in here, which is nice because you do have some more real estate up here in the middle of the handlebar area. You could mount if you wanted to get a cell phone holder, probably put it on that side so you still have access to your drink. Uh, but you can get a cell phone holder on here or if you wanted to get some other accessories like maybe a, you know, a secondary uh, bottle holder or something. You could totally get that on there. You got lots of space up here to mount something else, maybe a horn. Uh, if you really want people to get out of your way. <laughs> uh, on the other side, you do have a mirrored set for uh, the brakes. Of course, that's the front brake. This one is for the rear. We'll get into the uh, display for the electric system in a little bit. So the frame on the bike is a nice pearl white. Hopefully you can see it. It's probably kind of sparkly um, in the sun. Hopefully that shows up in on camera. It's a nice pearl white. One of my favorite colors is pearl. Uh, coming down the frame, it does have a really good approachable step through. So you can totally get get your leg in and out of there fairly easy. The standover height uh, on the bike is relatively short, 15 and a half inches uh, from the ground all the way up to about this point here. Do have bottle cage bosses right here, easy to access if you wanted to mount a water bottle or maybe a pump or a set of tools or a lock. So with this seat, it does have a quick release uh, right here if you want to pull that open and then you can adjust the height of the, of the seat post. This is a kind of odd size, it's a 30.4. Uh, diameter for the seat post itself. You could get, hey, some dogs. So you could get an adjustable, or not adjustable, you could get a suspension seat post on here if you wanted to. It would kind of soften it up a little bit. The seat doesn't have a especially high profile, but the footprint is pretty good. It's about a seven inch, seven and a half inch footprint uh, on, the, on the platform of the seat. It has some nice gel into it. It's a it's a pretty good one. Also, you have a handle in the back here. It's kind of obstructed from the cargo, uh, but there's a handle underneath the seat right here that you can use to kind of pick up the bike and maneuver the back end around uh, pretty easily. Uh, so with the seat post, there is one thing I did want to mention, and that's actually about uh, the cargo capacity. All right, so with the rear basket, right now there's actually a box on top of it that I've strapped on there. In a lot of cases, you probably won't need to because the basket in the back uh, can actually handle quite a bit of cargo inside the basket without having to protrude over and start to get in the way of the seat post. Let me kind of show you how that works. Uh, so right now I have this strap, which of course is an aftermarket strap. Uh, I open that up and then boom, take the box off. And right here is the basket. So this is actually an additional cost. This is $69 if you wanted to get this rear basket, which honestly, I, I think I would totally do it. Uh, this also, this bag is a different story, but we'll get into that in a second. Uh, so the basket can handle quite a bit of space. You could totally get a couple gallons of milk in here, kind of strap them down, and it's all weighed in on the rear rack uh, over here. Um, but we were kind of talking about the seat post. So 
The seat post actually can go a little bit lower beneath that, but you kind of have to maneuver it. So the basket is mounted in the most rear position and pushing the seat directly down will kind of come into contact with that handle here, but it's an easy fix. You just got to turn it and then get it down to a low position and then you're ready to rock and you can lock it back and then go on a ride. So that's pretty cool because you can also access the entire band of the minimum seat height. Uh, I actually have seen a design for a cargo bike in which the seat was obstructed by the rear rack and it couldn't go down any further. So your seat post was stuck up, you know, another like five inches or so. But this one's cool because you can maneuver it right around there and still get the seat in a really low position, which is nice. For myself, I would probably ride it fairly high. I have somewhat long legs, so I'd be good there. Uh, but you can still get all of your cargo in line with the basket and it should be all right. Uh, but again, this basket does hold a fair amount, it has some nice strong tubing to it uh, and lots of options. If you wanted to get some extra straps or some bungees or something, you could totally deck this out to carry all sorts of different stuff uh, because it does mount on the rear rack, which is part of the frame. Uh, so the total capacity of the bicycle in general is 310 pounds. So if you yourself uh, weigh about 200 pounds or so, if you want, if <laughs> you could carry another 100 pounds worth of stuff on here, both on the front uh, and or the back. Uh, so be wise with it. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, this bike honestly can carry a lot more than I personally would want to do on a daily basis, but maybe you do banana delivery, you know, maybe you do something like that because <laughs> this bike could totally do it. It can carry quite a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, the, the accessory bag. So here I have an accessory bag that actually was sent with the bike uh, for the purpose of review. This is 129 bucks if you want to get it from Civi Bike and it fits, as you can see, right in there very easily. Uh, right now I just have some things in there to kind of get a sense of scale. I've got the, you know, the mountain bike helmet uh, and a lock inside of here uh, just to kind of show you the inside of it. It does actually expand. So at this point it's in the in kind of like the uh not so much collapse position but you can open it up with this little zipper here and then it will expand another two or three inches outside of what uh of what fits exactly inside of the rack if you wanted to also you have some pretty cool reflective stripes um if you wanted to tie this down to the bag in this case i have a fair amount of weight in here with the metal lock so i'm not too worried and especially when i had the box over there there's a very minimal chance it would fly out but the idea of these straps is to kind of velcro them over you got some nice reflective sides front back end also reflection on the rear just in case i suppose this is a pretty cool duffel bag you know i like that it fits exactly in there that's a really good part of it it's not the strongest material you know i wouldn't want to carry maybe say sharp tools in here for a long period you'd probably be better off with a box or something but if you wanted to do this for exactly what the namesake is just run about something very quick and easy kind of uh toss it in there and then just go i think this can handle a variety of different things without having too much negative wear on it but yeah you're ready to rock uh, let's go ahead and continue on with some of the mechanical specifications kind of got sidetracked a little bit by talking about the cargo capacity <laughs> i'm excited because this is a cargo bike and I like cargo bikes uh, so we did talk about the frame in that the rear rack is mounted to the frame it's welded in here onto the aluminum frame and you can see there's some metal going on here it has this tube coming up another diagonal tube flat tube second diagonal tube mirrored on the other side of course and that's a lot of metal I mean that brings a total weight of the bicycle to about 59 pounds uh, which isn't especially light but for the amount of capacity that you can carry with this thing it's actually pretty good it's not uncommon to see cargo bikes weighing a lot more because they are larger bicycles much larger bicycles all right so with the gearing on the bike you do have a chain that comes along the entire length uh, of the back end of the bike um, at, at the risk of comparing it to too many cargo bikes, this is actually a fairly short chain because a lot of them have a longer tail and therefore the chain has to continue extending. Uh, so up on the front you have a 52 tooth uh, chain ring, uh, which is all the teeth inside of this guy right here. Uh, I do have a double guard on here. It's a plastic guard that's holding uh, the chain in place a little bit, uh, but also it protects your pants from getting gunked up from grease of the chain or anything like that. Uh, 
Uh, so in the back end, you're coming into uh, 11 to 28 teeth um, for the gears in here. That's a seven speed, so you got seven gears in there, uh, all with the Shimano Altus derailleur. Again, that's mechanical actuated, as is the industry standard. Uh, so this is pretty good. Uh, the Shimano Altus isn't necessarily the high end, uh, but with the cadence based pedal assist system, a lot of times the electric um, motor will kind of power over the gears. Um, it's not a bad thing at all. It just means that the motor is going so fast that you have to switch gears is a little quicker uh, and so having a Shimano Altus isn't bad at all you're not going to be doing a whole lot of heavy strain uh, while shifting gears uh, which is pretty good and also you can throttle the bike as well uh, let's go ahead and use the opportunity to kind of jump on the other side of the bike and then get into the electrics uh, so of course you do have a 160 millimeter uh, rotor in the back here uh, again like the brakes up front and this is the motor so this is a 500 watt motor uh, right in the back of the bike um, so it peaks at about a thousand uh, watts and it has 90 newton meters of torque, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, this is Hang Tai, which is the brand of the motor. I like it. it. You know, it works. With the hub motor systems, uh, a lot of times one of the complaints is actually weight on the back of the bike because, of course, this motor adds a fair amount of weight into the equation. Uh, it's about, oh, I'd say, somewhere around nine pounds or so. Um, but that's not so bad when you have a cargo bike, when you have a bike that is literally made from the ground up to have all the weight in the back. Of course, this motor can handle a 48 volt system because this is a 48 volt battery. Uh, this is actually a pretty big battery, truth be told. I mean, not just the size. I mean, I'm talking about the capacity. This is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery, uh, which is a lot <laughs> to kind of pack in here. Uh, I don't have the key with me, but I can show you that in a little bit. Um, but putting the key into the system, you can kind of turn it. Um, it's not necessary for ignition, but it actually can just remove the battery from the bicycle and you can take it off. There is the plug right here for uh, plugging in the charger and that's a one-way charger, so it's not gonna be in upside down or anything. So don't gotta worry about anything like that, as well as kind of an on-off switch, which is pretty easy to get to right there. Uh, the battery mount is central, so the battery weight is kind of in the middle of the bike, uh, which is good. Um, better than having the weight all in the back because you know I just talked about having the motor weight in the back Which is not that big of a deal, but if you put everything back there it might be too much So I'm glad that they put it kind of in the middle of the bike here You know, it's kind of a choice they could put it uh, in the center of the bike or they could put it on the down tube right here I've seen both uh, This is a pretty good option. You know, I don't see anything um, Alarming about that at all. You do have a cadence sensor a 12 magnet cadence sensor That's actually built into the bottom bracket area. So sometimes you'll see like a a big disc that's kind of in between in this case it's all built in uh, it's all kind of tucked away in there which is kind of nice uh, you do have some waterproof connectors uh, these are some kind of some really easy connectors that just kind of unplug if say you wanted to switch out the battery or switch out the controller for some reason you could just unplug those kind of take it apart with some simple tools if you had to or if there's some kind of you know service or warranty claim uh, coming up on the system uh, you do have some plastic pedals. I didn't mention that about the mechanical system. Uh, so that it does have a steel core with kind of a plastic pedal. These are good. The big thing about plastic pedals is that they don't last a terribly long time. So somewhere around, I don't know, a year or two of, of regular use, you probably want to look into getting some other pedals. But they work great from the gate. You know, you can toss them on the bike and get going without a, you know, without a care in the world. Uh, they do have the reflectors built into them, which is kind of nice. So while we're talking about the electric system, or getting back into it, let's go ahead and turn it on. Uh, so pressing the M button on the front of the display will start the electric system, and it's rather tiny. You know, that doesn't tell you a whole lot in here uh, because it's a smaller system. It's physically small. Um, I'd say it's somewhere around, gosh, what is that? Uh, maybe like inch and a half or so uh, for total length. Um, so it doesn't tell you too much. It has the main speed right here, which is the biggest letters, you know, right, or the biggest numbers right in the middle. Then you have your pedal assist level surrounded by that box and your battery up on the top left. So that's pretty much it. Honestly, I kind of like a display that doesn't tell you too much. Uh, let's go ahead and get the speed going on the throttle. There you go. You can see those numbers kind of stack up. Honestly, I don't like a big display that tells you a ton of stuff. I find it a little bit overwhelming and most of the time I don't use a lot of those features. So I honestly like the streamlined display. It's something I like a lot. And some basic controls, pressing the plus or minus button will increase or decrease the amount of pedal assist that you have uh, from level five all the way down to level one. And you can turn it off by pressing and holding the M button for mode. 
Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, you do have some other um, functions in here. If you press the mode button once, it will cycle through a trip set, an odometer, ride timer, average speed, max speed, kind of the basics. And pressing and holding the plus and minus button will allow you to reset that along with a couple of other uh, parameters. Uh, reset the trip. No, oh, thank you. Let's go back. Press and hold. And there we go. Turn it off. Good. All right, so that's the display uh, system. And we kind of talked about the electric and the mechanical, along with the battery, the motor, the cargo capacity. Let's go ahead and jump on the bike and take it for a ride. My favorite part. Okay, guys, so I actually had a chance to go back and uh, load up the bike with a bunch of cargo to test out how it does when it's closer to the weight capacity. Uh, so let me show you what we're working with. Uh, so on the back of the bike, I actually have this big bag that's full of electric bike batteries from yesteryear. So this has about 35 pounds worth of electric bike batteries inside of this one bag. And underneath that is a 50 pound bag of sand. <laughs> so yeah, it's not too much of a stretch to get to, you know, hundred pounds of extra weight uh, on there. Don't think my helmet quite weighs 15, but we're getting there. Uh, anyways, I actually wanted to show you that I wanted to put this bag, uh, the lighter weight one at 35 pounds, I wanted to try putting it up front. I'm not sure what the weight capacity is of the front basket exactly. I just know the total weight capacity for the entire bike. But this little ring right here uh, for like the cup holder, that one didn't let me get anything terribly big and bulky inside of there without trying to, you know, bend this ring out of the way or something a little more, um, you know, uh, damaging. So I think they kind of that's kind of a purposeful thing. You know, the front rack can certainly hold a good amount of weight, but I don't know about putting 50 pounds worth of sand in the front uh, or possibly 35 pounds worth of batteries. It might be a bit much. So uh, in this case, I put everything in the back and I got to this spot in the park already just fine. So it does work. Uh, but let me go ahead and jump on the bike with you guys and show you what it does. Okay, so here we are on the bike moving and we're, you know, getting close to that weight capacity uh, of the bicycle itself. Uh, so it starts up just fine. You know, it, I use the throttle to get going because uh, it's a cadence-based pedal assist, so it kind of takes a minute to kick in. Not a minute, but it takes more than just putting pressure on the pedals. You actually have to rotate the pedals uh, a little bit. So when you have a high amount of weight on the back, a good amount of capacity, probably want to goose that throttle a little bit for starting up. So that's a good thing to do. Uh, but the bike is surprisingly nimble uh, when it's got all the weight on it. One extra thing I did do was I lowered the seat. So if you kind of take a look at my seating position, uh, my knees are kind of hot or kind of high, you know, <laughs> they're not getting the full leg extension. Now, the reason for that is because I want my weight, my personal weight to be low as well. And with that combination of lower weight for me, um, it and also having the weight lower um, on the back, uh, it helps out quite a bit uh, with balance and also stability. So it's 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 nimble, you know, as I would describe the bike. We're kind of shifting into talking about this bike specifically. I would describe this bike as nimble, uh, but it can hold a lot more weight than I'd probably use myself. So it's not terribly long. So I don't know if I'd carry like big boards of lumber or anything. Uh, that's kind of rare, but heavy stuff like this, it can do. It's a, it's a little, it's a little squirrely when you first start. So if you're going kind of slow, anywhere between like five, seven miles an hour or so, if you're going about that speed and then, and you get to like some tight turns or something when you're first starting out, you know, maneuvering in a parking lot, then it can be, it can be a little squirrely. I would rather have the weight up in the front. You know, that's, that is one thing. If you're going to carry this much weight, I'd like it in the front because I got to have a hand on the wheel. Sometimes I can let go with both hands while I'm holding the camera. But on this one, you definitely want have some, have some control on there. I would guess that the range is going to be somewhere about without anything on it, except for yourself. I would guess uh, somewhere around 30, 30 miles or so. 30 miles is a good guess. Maybe a little bit more, probably, or maybe a little less, probably more. Um, but when you have weight on the bike, and especially if you got weight on the bike and you're going fast, that will eat up the battery pretty quick. Which, by the way, even fully loaded, I mean, this bike is getting close to capacity. It can get up to 23, 24 miles an hour um, fully loaded. Uh, that's not really a problem. But it does eat, in, eat into your battery pack. That's one thing to consider. The bike can certainly handle it. As you can see, it's doing good with you know, a lot of load, almost fully loaded up to the weight capacity for the bike. And it's, you know, it feels better. The more momentum you have, the more nimble it is. Let me show you a little bit. So right now I'm going about 
I'm going up a hill fully loaded <laughs> at about 18 miles an hour. Um, and I'm taking a little bit of turns. I'm being a little goosey with it, a little free handed. Uh, and it's performing nice. Let's go ahead and do throttle. Throttle, of course, goes past uh, that weight, or sorry, that speed. So yeah, now we're getting close to 23 miles an hour. But that display is not terribly big. Uh, that's one thing I should mention. So if you're trying to count your calories or uh, keep an eye on the clock, that's it's kind of a streamlined display. So, but yeah, I feel like the more momentum I have, the better it is, the lot better it is. So yeah, that would be my uh, my synopsis for the cargo capacity is that when you've got it, when you got it in the parking lot, getting loaded up at Lowe's or Costco or something, the parking lot's gonna be the hardest part. But once you get out on the road, you're gonna feel pretty good again. So that's my summary. <laughs> All right, guys, so here we are on the runabout from Civi Bike. I got it cranked up to level five pedal assist. Let's go ahead and go for a ride. Okay, at one point there we were going about 23 miles an hour, so that was a fun little stint. Uh, fun bike, really, really powerful. Okay guys, so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the cargo options that you can get for this bike. Uh, so for the majority of this review, I've had the rack on, or I've had the little cage, the, uh, the basket on the rear rack of the bicycle. That's an optional accessory that you can uh, purchase, uh, but they also have another option that I wanna show you. Uh, so like I said, I've had this basket on the back uh, for the majority of the review, uh, but right now it's off. Uh, it mounts with those pretty simple little holes uh, right in there onto the rack itself. This is another option. This is kind of like a faux leather um, bag, uh, double pannier bag that they have on here uh, that kind of straps into the frame uh, right there. Uh, so it's pretty simple um, in its operation, but it has a lot of nice features. It has a reflective stripe on the back, so that adds a little bit more visibility to it. Uh, these are actual buckles. They're not like fake buckles, uh, so that's kind of nice. Uh, you open it up and it can carry a fair amount of stuff in here. I have a loaf of bread to kind of give you an idea of scale. Uh, as well, I have the charger for the bike itself. By the way, this is a two amp charger. Uh, pretty simple, uh, plugs right into the battery on or off the bike. But you could totally get two loaves of bread on each side, maybe three, I don't know, depends on the brand. Uh, and it closes up pretty simple. You can actually ride with it just tucked away like this. This is fine. I was going about 20 miles an hour earlier, just like this, and it was doing A-OK. -okay. Uh, one thing about the bag and the rack is that they are, or not the bag and the rack, the bag and the basket is that they are mutually exclusive. Uh, the only way you're going to get the basket on top of this is if you kind of drill through the, um, the fabric here. If you do that, you know, you could have them both. However, that's going to limit your access because opening up the bag has to come up from the top. So it's really kind of like one or the other. Myself, I would definitely prefer the basket for my own personal needs. But if you do some pretty regular commuting, you know, kind of an A to B sort of bicycle and you kind of have things set, you could totally use this. The straps for this are not terribly large. It has Velcro points. It has a pretty simple Velcro on the front or on the back, on the front, as well as on the bottom of both of the sides. So I think the idea is to be really quick, that you can grab this handle and yank the whole thing off, and then off you go, and then you can go into the office or you know, some other daily routine that you have with the bike. So that's, that's an option to consider. Uh, again, that's another accessory from Civi Bike. So thanks for checking out the review of the Runabout from Civi Bike. It's actually a pretty good little stout cargo bike. It's uh, definitely refreshing to see a different take on the cargo bike, uh, kind of bike electric bicycle. So yeah, if you want to check out the full review for this bike, go to electricbikereview.com where you can see all the specifications and measurements as well as the full written review right up on this bike. You can also compare this with other electric bikes and brands. You can participate in the forums if you'd like to ask a question or participate in the community. So thanks for watching guys, ride safe.